Hey, peace and love, family. I wanted to come on and uh, go in on a hot topic in the Moorish community that uh, seems like a lot of people either don't understand or they're not really explaining properly because they're trying to get their they members, their fellowship up, trying to get people into their temples, but people are not just really coming with it all the way in the law. So me, I have to come with that... Uh, that blunt, honest truth, you know, the best I can, come with it as hard as I can, as pure as I can to give it to people. And uh, I'm going to be unbiased in this one to my very best of my ability. Um, I'm going to go in on Moore's name correction, proclamation, status correction. You know, some of the hottest topics and everybody... I'm not going to say everybody, but a lot of people put it out there like it's a cookie-cutter process. Everyone goes and does it this exact same way. And if you're not doing it this way or the way our people are doing it, you're doing it wrong. And that's one of the biggest fallacies out there. You know, there are different methods. You know, there's common law name change. There's the court name change or the judicial and then there's another one that's a little bit backwards from Moors. I'm going to bring that one up later. But it's just, it's weird to me that the split, you know, between what I'll say is the Temple Moors and the Elodial Moors, you know, a lot of them all believe in the same thing. They do common law name change. You know, that's what the Temple does. When you go in... In front of your peers, proclaim your nationality, attach an L a bit, bay on your name, get that nationality card that, that they give to you. You're not going before the courts. You know, that's not a, a, a judicial name change. It's a common law name change. And I definitely see the merit in it. There's nothing wrong with it, you know. But, you know, there are different methods that you can employ that are just as legally sound. You know, now if you just want to talk about the custom of the temple that's something different but just legally in general you know there are different ways of doing it and there are different ways of status correction you know people have different ideas of about what status correction even is but there are a load of moors that do both common law name change or court name change but then you have temples that do common law name change and you have temples that do naturalization which is assimilating themselves back into the u.s corporation and ask backwards for what a moor should be doing when you're saying that you're moorish american and you're not a part of that system but hey i mean i wouldn't suggest naturalization but i do understand the need of some moors to be public and maybe manipulate the straw to be able to operate in that room there's nothing wrong with that you know there may be a time where we need our people on the inside and you know i couldn't say we couldn't use them right now you know there's definitely uh, local offices where we could get people in that could affect change but you know, there's some people that say, hey, well, you have to do this. You have to go totally private. You have to expatriate and this and that. That might not be good for a local politician that, that wants to proclaim their nationality. You know, somebody that works in the public. I know lots of moors that work in the public. Some drive trucks or do insurance, you know, notaries, things of that sort. There's public positions that moors could have that could be beneficial to us just like the europeans use them for the benefit of their own people is more of a thing that we don't have our own people in these these places these high places and having someone in one of these high places is what a lot of the people from the temple and the temple leadership are trying to do and there's nothing wrong with that but one thing i can say is that is a long remedy. It takes a long time to get enough people to vote somebody in 
and then that person turn around and employ the legislation needed to apply the remedy to us as a whole. Whereas a lot of the allodial moors work from the opposite, from the ground up way, where we go at personal remedy and we expand from ourselves, our family, into our extended family of moors, to our tribes, locally and some even bigger, depending on how, how far your reach is. But what we need to understand as Moorish Americans is that we need to stop ridiculing so hard our own people because they employ a different method of going after remedy. You know, for each his own. And it's true in law because if we all come with the same cookie cutter thing, you know, people that go in court know you can't go in there with somebody else's templates, you know, back to back to back to back. It's just not going to work. It might work for the second person, you know, at applying some remedy, but, but, but by the third person, they're going to be then caught on and say, hey, let's throw this little loop in the game, you know, see if they know how to handle this because it doesn't look like it. They're coming with the same stuff as everyone else. Put them to the test. They're going to put you to the test regardless, even if you come with a whole customized process of your own, no matter what it is you do in law, in the streets, in commerce. And, you know, Moors that are very active, you know, they know this. You know, you just have to have all the, the right maximums of law and principles down so when they do come, you're ready for whatever they come with. And that's really where it's at. More than anything, you have to really study. You know, this proclaiming your nationality and status correction, you know, it has its legal, political benefits versus, you know, maybe commercial benefits which people are looking for because people come into the, the knowledge, they're looking for the benefits. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean... Yes, everyone should be looking to put into the pot, but at the same time, I understand that people need help, and you got to meet people where they're at. You can't be so in your higher self, so above everyone, that you can't remember a time when you were in your lower self, and you had to find something better. It was just not the way, you know, and, um... The different methods for status correction, whether legal, political, commercial, if you even want to separate them at all, you know, they have different implications and everything is not right for every person. You know, like I say, a, a, a politician versus a business owner. You know, a business owner may be able to go totally private, you know, operate out of trust, which politicians can and most of them do you know, we all need to be operating out of trust but when we operate in the public or we operating as a straw entity you know have we corrected our straw entity you know or are we still going as that negro black of color under the slave status because i know for a fact that you know you can say you are more all you want to, but when it comes time for proof, you know, common law name change helps, but if you haven't done more paperwork, you know, and you continue to operate under these contracts as a Negro, black, or colored, then you will be treated as such. You know, the thing about common law name change and common law status correction is you're going to need some paperwork to show Besides just the fact you may have a nationality card that, hey, I haven't been operating in this destroyed slave status. I haven't incurred such and such liabilities that, you know, maybe a citizen would have. So I'm not bound by that contract. But a lot of people like to say it's just because of more you're not bound to any contract, you're not bound by their jurisdiction, but that's just not true because your actions show differently. You know, as long as you're operating 
you know, with their stuff, you're going to have to render unto them what is theirs. It's just a simple fact, you know. And um, it's your conduct as well. You have to be in honor. You know, a lot of Moors want to say, you know, we'll, the policy enforcer didn't have jurisdiction. What were your actions, you know? What were you doing that made him intervene? I'm not saying that they don't violate policy, violate any and everything that they've ever considered standing for that had to do with the job, their badge, and anything that's moral or right. I know they did ass wrong a lot of times, but were you at the same time? Were you right, you know? If you have injured someone, injured someone's property, you know, uh, caused harm to someone's property, and then trying to say, hey, you don't have any jurisdiction, you don't quite understand public and private. You don't quite understand what the law really says, you know, and what applies to who, what gives them jurisdiction. So, we has got to look a little bit deeper into all of these things, these topics, and you can't just go listening to what everyone says, you have to dig deeper. Yeah. If you don't know the difference between public and private law, you don't understand the difference between common law and judicial law or commercial law, hey, you might get caught up. And a lot of people will, or I'll say a lot of Moors, they like to treat color of law and special law like it holds as much weight as constitutional law when it's just not true. It's just facts. Yeah. And I personally agree with the Moors that say we shouldn't be held to this colorable law and special law. Yeah. And that's not being biased. That's just understanding what these laws really are. You know, it's a difference between just saying I shouldn't be bound to this because I'm a moor and knowing what the law actually is and why and how it works. Just like with commerce, you know, you can understand this commercial system and know how it works and choose to not be be a part of it still. Or you can know exactly how it works and be like Donald Duck. I mean, Donald Trump, you know. He has a quote saying he loves debt. He's a master manipulator of debt. You know, that's what got him in, into the presidency. Not not his money, his ability to manipulate commercial debt. And that's why he's able to stay afloat the way he has. You know, through bankruptcies and this and that. They ask him how you discharge, you know, almost a billion dollars. Hey, he knows how to operate in commerce. And there are a lot of moors that teach commerce, some of them in this fashion, but you'll have Moors that never learn that in the temple and, and say, hey, that, that's not Moors, that has nothing to do with our status. It's not necessarily true. Because anything dealing with citizenship has to do with commerce. It's just a fact in these new and common era and I could get into that further, but I'm not going to qualify that in this video. I don't quite have time because I'd have to go real deep into diplomatic relations. And in the course between different nations, UN documents, to go into international law to really show and prove on that one. But in the modern sense, citizenship and commerce are pretty much one and the same. And it's, it's why you have the birth certificate, the social security account linking together being part of commerce. It's just you have to know how to re-manipulate that to, to correct what they did because if you can correct your nationality on such documents, if they're also commercial documents, there must be a commercial side to them. So it's just getting into the advanced knowledge and study of how to do all these things. 
you know, and you know, it all goes into name change, proclaiming your nationality. You know, those are the keys. You know, I've heard people say even expatriation is the key. If that's the key to going private, well, that's part of the key. You know, but nationality never falls out of the equation. You know, no matter what we're trying to do, you know, as Moorish Americans. If we're not in our own proper person, it doesn't matter if we're trying to do something legal, political, judicial, you know, commercial, whatever it is. Nationality applies. And, and, and the moment we step out of that, we step into our straw status because you could operate in commerce like in Django, Stephen, Samuel Jackson. When you first see his character on the plantation, he's writing out a check. For Calvin Candy, he's operating in commerce as a straw man or as a slave. Go back and check it out. But they allow slaves to operate in commerce to a certain extent. They don't give you all the keys. And that's what's going on with us. We haven't been given all the keys because of the Negro, Black, or colored status that we've been under. And it's more than just commerce. Yeah. So, you know, people come into this information and a lot of times, you know, they want to discharge debt. That's one of the things that draws them into it even before the, the history of the nationality. Not with everyone. You know, I was more into the history first. I, I spent years in the history before I got into the law side of it. But once I got into the law, I started getting into the commerce as well. You know, they all tie in. But... You got to get the basics first. Now, the basics start with, with your name and nationality, Christian. And um, with that, I want to yield because I, I want to go in on another video on commerce because we're gonna, we might be ushering in the wave of the future. So, y'all stay tuned. Peace and love.